Well, welcome everyone. Good morning. It's lovely to see you and it's lovely to um, thank you for coming. Uh, last week, we thought about the story of Peter and John healing the, the man who was lame um, from birth and we're continuing on from that passage in our service today. Before we get on to our service though, Here's a little excerpt of last week's Bible reading from Acts chapter 3. Peter said to the man who was begging outside the temple, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. So let's start our time together today with, uh, by praising God, just like that man was doing in that Bible reading. You can walk and jump as well if you like. Um, you're very welcome to do that um, if you're feeling like the man who was healed this morning. Thanks, team.
sharing presence to be all the things we need in Jesus. Amen. Please take a seat. Welcome again, everyone. Uh, my name is Marcia. I'm one of the elders here at the church, and thank you for coming today. If you're new or you're visiting, we'd love to meet you. We're going to have morning tea after the service, and that is through that door right there. And you're very welcome to join us and stay for a few minutes and have a chat. We'd love to have a chat. We are inviting people to wear masks at church if you're able to do that. And if not, you're still very welcome to be with us here today. If wearing a mask for an extended period of time is difficult for you, please just do prioritise putting a mask on when we're singing as that's a high risk activity for spreading viruses around. Um, and we want to prevent that if we can. Uh, this morning, we're continuing on with our Building Momentum series on Acts and the early church and what happened after Jesus went back to heaven. We'll be looking at what happened directly after the healing of the lame man that I read just before um, our songs this morning. But first, how are you feeling this morning? I've had a week or two of kind of big emotions. And I have to say, I felt that that sort of sucked down a bit of some of my momentum um, this morning. So I'm coming here today to think about building momentum in the early church and here in this church today, feeling, oh, I don't know that I've got any energy to build any momentum whatsoever. So how are you feeling today? Hopeful? Healed? Confused? Worried? Afraid? Joyful? I'm going to invite all of us now to bring those emotions to Jesus. So let's just close our eyes, take a deep breath, breathe out, let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, powerful Lord of life and death, you are hope for the hopeless and rest for the weary. You're the light of the world and the beginning and end of everything. You're our strength, our comfort, our rescuer and our friend. We bring to you this morning all that we are, all that we're feeling and all the pain and suffering that is happening in the world today. We ask for your forgiveness and we look to you for mercy. We are your people and you are our God. Help us to hear your Holy Spirit this morning. And we pray that we let you minister to each one of us today. Amen. We're having time for announcements today. So if you have something you'd like to share, whether that's just an, a, an announcement or a prayer or praise point that's happening in your life, please feel free to, to come up and share now. Thank you. Uh, just one small one for uh, members of our church leadership team. Uh, hopefully you have had your hair set, I know I have, ready for our photos uh, this after, uh, after this service. So we'll be gathering in the annex room um, for photos for our church leadership team. So please do uh, come and make your way to the annex. It shouldn't take too long. And then you can go back to having a cup of coffee and a chat with people. Thanks. This Friday, uh, the youth group are going to go to an escape room. It's fun. We have to yeah, it's escape a room. Um, no, that's right. Yes. Hopefully, we've had it. Done. Anyway, um, yeah. So that'll be an escape room. I think we'll try and meet here at six thirty. We'll go and do it, and then we'll come back here because they don't take that long, and we'll sort of hang out and do our Bible study afterwards. 
If you've got any questions, please do contact me. My name is Matt. You can email me at youth at ashfieldbaptist.org.au and we've got an Instagram, which is D-O-J-Y youth at dodgy youth. That's who we are. Anyone else? Shortest announcements in the history of this church. Um, thank you. Gordon is going to pray for us now, or with us, lead us. Thank you, Marcia. <clears throat> yes, um, <clears throat> if you're anything like me, you would have found the events of this week very overwhelming and challenging. And um, the one good thing that I would say to you at this point is that our God is greater than all those things that are going on. He is almighty God. And we're going to bring some of those things to him this morning. Things that in human strength we would find are just beyond us. We don't know where to start but we put them in God's hands and we leave them in his hands to deal with and to bring the answers to the needs of humankind. There have been international events. There have been terrible things happening near our home with floods and uh, other emergencies. And yet life goes on and there are also other things that we need to be praying for in the life of our church and our community. So let's come before God in prayer. And then at the end of the prayer time, I'm going to conclude with um, the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to do that a little differently in that I am going to pray the Lord's Prayer in the version that I knew and grew up with based on the King James Version and the Book of Common Prayer 1600 and whenever. And if you are familiar with it in those <laughs> words, please join in. Listen and pray in your hearts if you don't want to share the words. If you want to pray a more up-to-date and more personal version, please feel free to do so. And I know there may be some within our congregation this morning for whom learning the Lord's Prayer did not happen in the, the English language. And if you are one of those people for whom English is not your first language and you would like to pray the Lord's Prayer in the words that you grew up with, then also please feel free to do so. So let's come before our God. Let's bow before our God in prayer. Almighty God, as we have watched on our television sets, and on our computers and read in our newspapers and magazines of huge areas of human suffering this week. We are left shocked and devastated. We have been shocked and devastated by what we have seen coming out of Eastern Europe. People left homeless, cities destroyed, pain, suffering. And we ask, Lord, where will this all end? And we put these things into your hands, Lord. We ask you to deal with the anger, the pain, the suffering, and all the other human conditions that impinge on that situation. Lord, and bring your peace. Change the hearts and minds of people who seem to be implacable. Lord, we commit that situation to you. As we also commit to you the situation near a home when so many people this week have lost their homes, their belongings, their communities, 
And we know that for some of us, that came awfully close to home. Lord, we just pray for the work that has to be done to bring people back together, to bring communities back together, to restore what has been destroyed. Lord, again, we commit to you each and every person who is suffering through um, flood and storm damage in our country this week. And we pray earnestly for those who have the will and the power to do something about the situation, to bring about the changes that are needed. Lord, we commit them to you and pray that, again, hearts and minds might be changed to bring about better outcomes. We want to pray again for the continuing COVID situation. We've heard rumours and whisperings this week about new variants and things that might happen. Lord, again, we just pray that you will have mercy upon people here and, Lord, that this might not be yet another um, twist in this whole pandemic situation that we have experienced over the last year or two. Lord, we just pray that you will watch over us, particularly, Lord, at this time. Again, we just want to bring before you those who serve in hospitals, medical centres, aged care facilities, and other places of caring for those in real need. We particularly, again, pray for our little family up the road here at Ashfield Baptist Homes. Lord, you've been so good to them, but Lord, we recognise it is still a very difficult situation up there as the pandemic still hovers around. <clears throat> Lord, we commit them also to you. We pray, Lord, this morning for all your people who labour in your service in this community. We're conscious that we are one church that works in this area, but there are other groups of your people also active within our community, seeking to bring others to know Jesus seeking to do good in the name of the gospel. Our friends at the Anglican and Presbyterian churches and others who have affiliations elsewhere but still live and work within this community. Lord, we want to pray for them all this morning. And we pray, Lord, that the name of Jesus might be proclaimed in so many different ways within Ashfield, within the inner west, and within Sydney, that many may come to know him. So we pray for those um, efforts and endeavours that are being made in this community week by week. And we pray, Lord, as we think of those who are reaching out in a more formalised way, we also think of ourselves and the people that we have contact with day by day, week by week. We thank you for people that we can talk to and have friendships with. And Lord, we pray that um, everything we do and everything we say in our lives might reflect Jesus and be a light shining into the darker places of this world. So we, we commit all these things to you. And now, Lord, Lord God, we just want to pray together that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Please join me as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Thanks, Gordon. This is our offering spot in the service. Uh, we mostly give electronically these days and we are thankful for the financial blessings that allow us to do that, um, to join together in this community. Here are the details of our church account if you'd like to make an offering, but there's also a wooden box up the back if you'd like to make a cash offering this morning instead. Our next song, thanks music team.
Please have a seat. And Amelia is going to bring us our Bible reading now. Today's Bible reading comes from Acts chapter 3, verses 11 to 16. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Would you join with me in prayer as I begin? Father, thank you that you are here with us this morning by your spirit, that you have gone before us. Lord, I'm so thankful and deeply comforted by the truth and the reality that you're with us, but that you've also gone before us. Lord, you've seen the things that we are going to struggle to face. And Lord, you are at work in that space even now. And Lord, I, I thank you for that. And as Marcia has invited us to bring everything before you this morning, I, I pray we might continue to do that. And also recognize that you've gone before us into those things. And I pray right now as we hear what you have to say to us, Lord, that you'd soften our hearts to be ready for what it is you've prepared for us this morning in this moment. We are expectant that you will be at work in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Though we often live as life all depends upon us, we are powerless to live this life as God intended for us without the power of Jesus at work within us. Jesus' power draws a crowd. It has overcome rejection and overcome death. And Jesus' power even builds the faith required to be dependent upon him. We can't just be reliant upon ourselves because our momentum building power is Jesus. We all like to believe that we're quite self-sufficient, competent. We can accomplish all of the things. But this rapidly unravels when our electricity fails. When the power goes out in our home, if you're anything like me, you jump into action consistently thinking of things that require electricity to achieve. Oven's down, we'll have to microwave dinner. We'll watch a movie on my phone. Oh, that needs charging. The truth is, we are dependent upon other things and even other people. On December the 26th, 2018, Colin O'Brady completed the first solo, unsupported, unaided crossing of Antarctica. 1,500 kilometers in 54 days, basically just in the white of the snow. An extraordinary feat of endurance. But despite being solo and unsupported, Colin had partnerships with companies that provided the clothing and the equipment that he needed to even contemplate trying a challenge like this. He even had a company develop 
kept what they called the Colin bar, which delivered him 7,000 calories a day. Now, apparently you actually need 10,000 calories a day to cross Antarctica, uh, but there was no way that he could carry that amount uh, and also not consume uh, more than that. So he worked his way across Antarctica. But also whilst Colin was there on his own, he had people who were monitoring his progress, people who were uh, observing him via satellite. And he regularly spoke to his wife, Jenna, via satellite phone as he was out there uh, in Antarctica, who helped to keep his head straight. Even though he did the walking on his own, even though he was physically out there on his own, Colin was dependent upon things outside himself in order to complete the journey. Sometimes, however, there are situations that remind us that we are entirely dependent upon Jesus. I have friends, uh, a missionary family, who have just uh, had to escape Russia. Two weeks ago on Saturday, the 26th of February, they decided that it was time to get out after the mom of this family had had a sense of God parting the Red Sea in order for them to kind of get out of the country. And also despite having a six-year-old who was due to go into hospital and have a cyst removed from his kidney. So they bought tickets for their family of seven to fly to Korea and then on to Sydney. By Sunday, access to their funds in Australian bank accounts had been frozen and they would no longer have been able to afford to buy tickets to leave. They then discovered that the airline that they were due to fly with from Korea back to Sydney required vaccines that weren't available in Russia. They bought new tickets with a different airline using up the rest of this month's budget. But at check-in, they discovered their flight out of Korea was now 24 hours and 15 minutes after their arrival. That's 15 minutes more than is allowed to transit in Korea. After desperately pleading with officials and pleading with God to be allowed to check in, they eventually presented their old tickets from Korea to Sydney, as the transit time on those was nine hours. Miraculously, despite them calling a day earlier to have these tickets cancelled, they weren't cancelled. And they were able to leave Russia, knowing that nine hours after they landed in Korea, they would be flying on from there. Upon arrival in Korea, their connecting airline at first denied checking because they had the wrong vaccinations. And after six hours of praying and calling every government agency in every nation they could think of, the airline changed their mind under exceptional circumstances allowed them to fly. 53 hours of travel later, they, was, they were met at Sydney Airport by an ambulance that took their six-year-old son straight off to hospital to be operated on that day. This family did all that they could, but they were entirely dependent upon Jesus to get home. Jesus' power at work in them and in the context of their circumstance provided the momentum for them to keep going and to get home. Though we often live as if it all depends upon us, we are powerless to live the life that God intends for us without Jesus' power at work within us. Jesus' power drew a crowd to this Extraordinary incident at the gates of the temple. Jesus' power has overcome rede rejection and death. And Jesus' power even builds the faith required to be dependent upon Jesus. We can't just be reliant upon ourselves because our momentum building power is Jesus. Today we conclude our series in Acts called Building Momentum, where we've been journeying alongside the early church in the first few chapters of the book of Acts, as they discovered the power of God to equip them for their new future, 
and they experienced the transformation that that power brought in their lives. My desire for us as a church is that we not only learn, but we experience what it means for us to be empowered by God's Holy Spirit to do what God is inviting us into. That we would see God's unstoppable power at work within each of us, each of us, to participate in all that God is inviting us into. Last week, we saw this overlooked man who had been lame from birth get truly seen as he was healed in the name of Jesus by Peter and John. And the result is, as Marcia has led us in this morning, this extraordinary thankfulness to God, leaping, jumping, praising God, but also the transformation in the Jewish people who looked on, filled with awe and wonder, they became people who were open to hearing more about Jesus. And now we find in the story that Millie has read for us, this man clinging on to Peter. And that's not because he can't stand on his own. We've just seen his miraculous healing. He's been leaping around. But now he's clinging on to Peter because there was something attractive about him, something attractive about Peter. Imagine the scene. If, if someone had changed your life so significantly, if you could now walk for the first time in your life, you wouldn't want to let that person go. I'm not letting you go. You've just transformed everything I understood to be my life. I can't let you go. And that's because whether this man fully understood it or not in this moment, Jesus' power is attractive. Jesus' power to bring about transformational change in the lives of people is attractive. And Jesus' power to transform lives is so attractive that all the people, however many that was, but all of them, ran to this entrance porch called Solomon's Colonnade, where they stood astonished, astonished at what had gone on. How's this lame man gained the ability to walk? Their faces must have been visibly aghast in order for Peter to respond as he does. And that's because Jesus's power has the incredible ability to disrupt the status quo to challenge the circumstances that people believe are set in stone and are always going to be this way, like the lame constrained to a life of begging. And this kind of transformation, this kind of power at work is attractive. And with this crowd drawn, now ready, receptive to receiving the gospel, the good news of Jesus, Peter then takes this moment to give this extraordinary sermon. And I'm wary of using that word because of what we believe sermons to be and who we believe can give them. But he spoke these words to these people, a sermon entirely aimed at drawing the focus off Peter and onto Jesus highlighting this extraordinary power in terms that they would understand. Peter starts this by referencing the prophet Isaiah, calling on language from Isaiah 42 and 53. Peter reminds this Jewish audience of God's promised servant, the savior that they were promised. When Babylon had come and, and crushed this city of Jerusalem, when they were in despair, in exile. And in no uncertain terms, Peter let them know that the one they had rejected, God had glorified, that Jesus is this promised servant that Peter is referencing as he speaks to this crowd in a language that they understand that the one who has the power to make all things unright, right again, the power to heal this man who was born lame, Jesus's power 
even overcomes rejection by those he came to save. But this group did more than just reject Jesus. They condemned him to death. Hammering home this extraordinary power of God, Peter then reminds this gathered group that despite their actions, God raised Jesus from the dead, demonstrating the extraordinary power of Jesus to overcome situations that to human eyes seem finite. Jesus' power overcomes death. If death can't hold him, what can? And just as this group of people might be beginning to question whether they've made a few terrible decisions, Peter speaks again of the power that Jesus embodies as he speaks again of the name of Jesus and of faith. The name of Jesus is a motif that runs throughout this section of Acts. Chapters 3 and 4 have eight references to it. And Peter compels this listening crowd to recognize the power of that name. The name in Jewish, uh, in Jewish thought expresses the very nature of a person's being. And as I mentioned last week, Jesus' name means to deliver or to rescue. But the name, the name, was also a sort of holy Jewish nickname for God. It would have spoken to uh, a Jewish people of God's power and of God's presence with them. Here, Peter is helping this audience to connect the dots on some of the stuff that they know, inviting them to grasp again in this physical reality before them that Jesus is the real deal, that Jesus actually was who he said he was. Jesus is this glorified servant, the name. He is the one that they have been waiting for. And more than just the one they've been waiting for, as Peter speaks of this lame man's healing, capitalizing on the events that have brought such a softening to the gospel, the good news of Jesus, Peter lets them know that Jesus is the one that they need. Because it's not just the name that has healed this man, but the faith that Jesus gives and brings to this man that enables him to receive and to accept the healing that Jesus is providing. Not only was Jesus the surgeon bringing restoration to this man's body, but He was the white blood cells that were doing the internal process of healing once that surgery had happened. In fact, in this metaphor, Jesus was even the one who drove this man to hospital. Incredibly, Jesus transforms lives and provides the power to receive that transformation through the Holy Spirit, the power to have faith in Jesus. Though we often live as if life all depends upon us, we're powerless to live the life that God intends for us. Without Jesus' power at work in us, Jesus' power draws a crowd, sees people aghast, amazed at what they've seen. Jesus' power overcomes rejection from those he came to save. Jesus' power overcomes death. Even death couldn't hold Jesus. And Jesus' power even builds the faith in those who are called and invited to receive his power from him. We can't just be reliant upon ourselves. Because Jesus is our momentum building power. And as we begin to explore what this might mean for us, I wonder what you might be thinking. But more than that, I wonder what change or 
transformation or response you sense that God might be inviting you into right now in this moment. My hope every time that we open the Bible together, every time we explore what God is saying to us through the Bible, is that we would be looking for God's invitation to each of us. Not, if you've been here for any time at all, looking for food for thought, which is my least favorite phrase. Here are a few of my reflections on what God is inviting us to consider from Peter's extraordinary sermon. If you've been a follower of Jesus for some degree of time, a while, you've probably experienced shame for being a Christian, some degree of being ashamed for being a Christian. How can we maintain such a narrow view that Jesus is the only way to eternal life? I, I don't want to offend anyone by letting them know what I actually believe. Hasn't the church caused so much damage in the world? Followers of Jesus have made terrible mistakes throughout history. I have made terrible mistakes. Some have committed crimes. But the transformational power of Jesus is attractive. The transformational power of Jesus is attractive. It drew quite a crowd on this temple porch. And the people of God, at their very best, have also been involved of some of, in some of the most extraordinary world-changing practices. And I'm not just talking about the establishment of justice systems, schools, hospitals, campaigns for prison reform, the care of the homeless, those without parents, those in crippling debt, amazing as all of those things are. I'm talking about the ways that Christians have been alongside people in their darkest moments, offering a hope that nothing in this world can. A ministry of presence, prayers for miraculous healing, food, shelter, comfort, guidance, the tiny, unpublished, unfamous stories of Jesus' power at work in and through his people everywhere, everywhere across this planet. If you have grown ashamed of your faith, I pray that you discover and expect again today that Jesus' power is attractive. Restored people cling hold to it, to evidence of it. And the power of Jesus is unstoppable. Perhaps this sounds like a message that you've heard a thousand times in church before. We need Jesus. Yep, next. <clears throat> or perhaps this is the first time that you've heard this message. Okay, we need Jesus. Is there anything else? There is nothing else. There's nothing else. Jesus is all that we need. Jesus is all that we need. The power of the spirit of Jesus at work in and through us, a life entirely dependent upon Jesus. He is how we live a life of worth. He is how we live the life that God is inviting us into. He is how we build momentum on anything worthwhile in this world. Jesus' power at work in his followers has been changing the world for centuries. And God wants to continue that through you and me. A power building unstoppable momentum in and through you and this church to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. And as I begin to wrap up, 
I'd love to take a moment to read over us the words that God says about Jesus in Isaiah 42. The stories that Peter was referencing as he spoke to this crowd of Jewish people. So we're reminded who Jesus is and what it is that Jesus is empowering us to continue in the world. The momentum that God is building in us. May I invite you to perhaps close your eyes as you hear these words. God says of Jesus in Isaiah 42, starting at verse 1. Here is my servant who I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I'll put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness, he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching, the islands will put their hope. This is what God, the Lord, says. The creator of the heavens, who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you Jesus in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. God speaks these words of Jesus. I have added Jesus into that passage. But that is who God is speaking of. The unstoppable power of Jesus at work in and through us invites us to sit with the bruised and the broken, to see justice established, to see hope restored, to pray for blind eyes to open and captives released both physically and spiritually. Though we often live as if life all depends upon us. We are powerless to live the life that God intends for us without Jesus' power at work in and through us, transforming who we are. Jesus' power draws a crowd. It might draw a crowd of people to you. Jesus' power has overcome rejection. It overcomes rejection so that you might overcome rejection. Jesus' power has overcome death, that you might escape death and experience eternal life with God. And Jesus' power even builds the faith required to be dependent upon him. Jesus' power is at work in you when you think, I just can't do this anymore. I haven't got anything left. Jesus' power is at work in you when you feel like it all depends upon you. And Jesus says, it all depends on me. I am everything you need. I have everything that you need. Jesus invites us not to be reliant upon ourselves any longer. He invites us to recognize that our momentum building power is Jesus. It 
As we begin to wrap up this service, I'm going to invite Glenn to come and join me back on the piano. And I'm going to invite us into a moment of receiving God's power for us again. And again, I just want to repeat to you that this is not about coercion. I am not trying to make you do something that you feel uncomfortable doing. You get to choose in this moment. I offer an invitation to you. And in this space, I, I invite you to adopt a posture, whatever that looks like for you, that says, yeah, Jesus, I'm open to you. I'm open to what you have for me this morning. into this space I pray a prayer that I've prayed a number of times throughout this series an ancient prayer one of the most ancient prayers a prayer that one of my heroes of the faith regularly prayed amongst congregations of people and that is simply come Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit prayer that is less about God and more about us, about readying our hearts to receive what God would want for us. And I pray, come Holy Spirit and meet each of us where we're at right now. Come Holy Spirit and meet us in the space of the impossible situation. And if your heart is moved by mercy, then that impossible situation might be Ukraine. Your heart might be turned to that right now, consumed with that. Go with it. Go with it. God gifts people with the gift of mercy that enables you to connect in an extraordinary way with injustice and things that are not as they should be in this world. Go with that. That might be the Holy Spirit leading you. possible situation might be something in your health that you think I have no idea how I'm getting through this it was a struggle to get here today impossible situation might be one that you are experiencing in your family a challenge that you think God, can you just change this can you just change it I don't know what to do anymore. Maybe the situations don't feel impossible. They just feel hard and you're not quite sure what the next step is. Jesus cares about them too. Jesus cares about situations where we think, yeah, I'm in the flow. This is good. I know what I'm doing. But Jesus wants to lead and guide and direct those that they might be even more, that they might be world-changing things. God is close to the weary and the downtrodden and the brokenhearted. But he is also at work in the extraordinary things in this world. If you're facing one of those, come Holy Spirit. And as we pray these things, as we pray, come Holy Spirit into each of these situations, you know what it is that your mind has turned to right now. What we are inviting is Jesus's unstoppable momentum building power to be at work changing that situation. You no longer have to rely solely upon yourself. Take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light, says Jesus.
and I encourage you just in this moment, just to be paying attention to what you sense and experience in your body, the thoughts that come to mind. God made us, he is at work in those things too. And sometimes they are not of him, but sometimes they are. And it's okay to pay attention to them, to listen, to reflect and to bring those thoughts that have come to mind and, and reference them against the things that you know and have read in scripture, in the Bible, to talk about them with Christian friends. Go, I feel like God might be saying this to me, but I'm not sure. What do you think? Because God is relational. He is inviting us into relationship, to experience him. This is a two-way thing. This is a two-way always thing. And my prayer right now is that you would know something of that relationship with God, specifically leading and guiding you through impossible situations. But most importantly, that you would know his love and affection and desire and delight for you. Welcoming you, embracing you, saying, you're my child, whom I delight. You're pride of my life. Come Holy Spirit, change, shape, renew us, I pray, that we might be those who experience the unstoppable momentum building power of Jesus at work in and through us in all that we face in this community. Would you change lives? Would you see people come to know Jesus? Would other people's lives be changed? Use us, we pray. I'm going to invite the band to join us back and to lead us in our final song. But can I encourage you in this moment? If God is doing something, I make a note, give you special permission to get out your phone and look like you're texting someone, but write a note to yourself. Don't forget, don't miss what God is doing in this moment. And if you need to stay in that moment, then stay in that moment. No one is going to look at you weirdly for not standing to sing the final song.
thank you again for spending time with us this morning. If you'd like prayer, um, please come and speak to Mark or me down the front after the service. And we have morning tea through that door as a reminder as well. Please join with me in our final prayer today. Powerful Jesus, you are the God of impossible situations. You are the God of healing and restoration in big ways and in small ways. As we go through our week, um, this week that comes now, we pray, Lord, that we will remember what you have said to us today. And we pray, Lord, that um, our lives will be filled with your strength and your power through the amazing name of Jesus.